Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I am Jerry, joined joined today by Paul, and only Paul. We're rolling as a duo, so if we were in a convertible, this this would be a suitable arrangement. We need to talk the right back deal, okay? Yes. Um. So, where this got started, why people are talking about this lately, is there's a recent story that came out and said that uh, Ancelotti was uh, had been won over by Sidibe and he was expected to give the green light for Everton to purchase Sidibe at the end of the season. Um, for those of you who have been living under a rock, um, I would say you got ripped off. Don't buy that you know, that kind of place anymore. All right, uh, we have an option to buy Sidibe for thirteen or tw- between twelve to thirteen million. It's about twelve point seven million pounds. Um, so. Uh, and we're, t- we're talking about a player right now who this season is ninth in the league in tackles. Um, he's got four assists, which makes him like tied for 23rd in the league in assists, which is interesting. Um, just to break it down via uh, per game, 3.6 tackles per game, 1.9 interceptions, 1.2 clearances a game. Compare that to Coleman, 1.4 tackles, 1.1 interceptions, 1.1 clearances a game, and John Joe Kenny in the Bundesliga. 1.5 tackles, 0.8 interceptions, 2.7 clearances a game. Okay? Um, so, you don't need me to say most of the stats there, which, let's be honest, those are skewed stats. They don't tell the whole story. I'm just giving you a bite-sized piece here. Uh, they do tend to lean towards Sidibe there. And I think if you were picking a starter out of, th- out of the three, Sidibe would be the guy. So, Paul, this is where... We need, we need to hear, we need to, the genuine Paul reflection here. Uh, are you in favor of a Sidibe Coleman sequel for next season? Uh, are you in favor of Coleman riding off into the sunset and us using Sidibe or Kenny? Or having Coleman be the only one to return? Or having Sidibe be the only one? Or Kenny the only one? What is your, I mean, there's a lot of different combinations here. Where does your gut tell you to go on this Coleman being the only one for his fan do what oh, not really what did you <laughs> say really. I said Coleman the only one to return oh yeah yeah I was, I was kidding <laughs> um so DB, I think it's nailed on we're gonna buy him isn't it the, mm-hmm. even not everybody is enamored with him but for the fee that's getting talked about how can you not buy him 13 is it thirty million pounds or thirty million euros? It's no, it's thirty. It's between twelve to thirteen million pounds. Uh, still, that's that's nothing um, in modern transfer, um, especially with English clubs. Um, twelve, thirty million pounds. That's what you're paying for an eighteen-year-old now. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's nailed on that Sadibi's going to come back next season. Um, John Joe Kenny. There's a lot of talk that maybe another year out on loan would would probably be what's best for him right now but past that makes me uneasy I I really I like John Joe Kenny I liked John Joe Kenny even when he was here last season and he was kind of in and out the side and sometimes he was good sometimes he was bad he looked very raw but I thought there was something there to work with and I I liked the fact that he was an under 23 captain he's come through the youth academy I thought he was someone who really the club should look to look to want to keep hold of and kind of make a, um, a staple in the side going forward. You, obviously, you'd want the likes of him and Tom Davis and um, Kieran Dow. They were the players who were kind of of the same generation, but not all of them are good enough. And I thought of that generation, John Joe Kenny was the one who I probably had the most time for. But one thing that worries me is if John Joe Kenny gets sent out on loan again or he comes back and he's just sat on the bench behind Sadibi. I'm worried that his head's gonna gonna go where Adam Ola Luckman's head went and he's gonna think, right, I I have to get on with my career. It doesn't look like I'm gonna be a starter at Everton anytime soon and I feel I should be a starter. So is it time I just make a tough decision and ask to go elsewhere? I, I worry because, about that because John Joe Kenny looks like he's having the time of his life out in Germany. All, all the interviews I've heard of him, he's talked about what a brilliant experience it is and how he's learning so much. 
is he going to want to? Is he going to want to trade that just to come and sit back on Everton's bench? That's my question. Yeah, or is he going to want to? Even if he comes back to Everton, and let's fingers crossed, this doesn't happen. But let's say he's back at Everton and he's in the lineup every week. But Everton start not going in the direction that we all want them to go in. What if we slide back down again? Mm-hmm. Hope that doesn't happen, but you you can't rule it out. Definitely not happening. Maybe he'd think, you know what, I'm I'm better than this. I enjoyed my time at Schalke more. Schalke are a very big club in Germany, a very well respected club that is around the European places. I just I just really worry. And again, if it goes back to Germany I, on loan. Even if it's just a loan, he only thinks, you know what, I love it here. I don't want to go back to Everton no matter what they offer me. So. In ideal world, we'd have to be as the, the number one next season with John Joe Kenny number two, but I just don't think that's realistic. Yeah. Um, first question, going back to something you said about uh, City of Bay being a, kind of uh, done and dusted almost. Uh, you didn't see, use the same words, I don't think, but uh, it's pretty much nailed on, I think it's what you said, something like yeah. that. Yeah, it, it looks like that. Uh, yeah. um, so here's a, here's a serious question. Um, just because he is such a good bargain, does that mean, does that mean he should be our starting right back? Serious question, because I don't, no. I, that's, that's the, that's the question. Cause I'm not sure. No, no. I think he's a good player. With goods about it. I don't think he's a great player. Mm-hmm. If he was a great player, he, let's have it right. He wouldn't be alone at Everton. What would he be? He'd still be in the Champions League with Monaco or something. Else. So, I think he's a good squad player. We should definitely bring him in, especially if we're going to be in the Europa League next season, like we all hope we are, and we're going to need bodies. You could, I'd certainly prefer to have him than to have, you know, some young youth kid mm-hmm. who we've never heard of. Not John Joe Kenny, someone right. who's just been plucked straight to the under twenty threes, like some clubs do. Sadibi. Uh, the, the, let's just take the fee out of it. I worry about his wages as well. Maybe uh, there are certain clubs. There are reports that certain clubs have been impressed by him also, mm-hmm. and they are in for it too. Yeah, I've heard so, that too. Yeah, so I, I don't know this will happen. But let's say in the summer, somebody comes to Sidibe or his agent and says, "I don't know, an Inter Milan or an Atletico Madrid or whoever you like." They say, "You know what? I know you liked it at Everton. We're impressed with you. We'll offer you." X amount a week if you want to come and play for us next season. I don't think Everton should be breaking the bank to bring him in, mm. just wage-wise. I don't think Everton should be making him a top earner. And I not a starter. They shouldn't promise him a starter. A starting berth. If he hopefully just has fallen in love with the club and he wants to be here and he's willing to just be a squad player, then I'm all for it. But if he starts making certain demands, I'd have no problem at all if Everton let him go back to Monaco and leave him there. Yeah, I wonder if players making those kind of demands are the type of players that Marcel Brands and Ancelotti even want on the team anyway. You know what I mean? Think about how Ancelotti likes to rotate players so much. I mean, it's not a situation where every player gets every game. He just doesn't believe in that, right? True, but we don't really know what a player's demands are until we get them in the, the boardroom could, and ask them to sign the You could develop a preconceived yeah. notion based on a loan year when you really don't know the player and you don't know what his agent's up to either. That's true. Yep. Yeah. Well, Kaku was like that, wasn't he? We had him on loan and he loved it and we thought we were going to sign this guy who's going to be here all his life or hoped he would be and then it, it's like he was he, he Five minutes after we apparently signed him, he was already making noises about going somewhere else. Now yeah. he was just a a stopgap. You don't, I, you don't know, do you? Yeah. You'll never know what a player, what a player's demands are until you actually sit him and his agents in a room and you actually start going over a permanent contract, not just alone. Yeah. For all we know, Sadi, for all we know, Sadibi just views us as a means to an end, he, just to get himself yeah. back to the window. And he might, and he might. You, you may be right there. I guess my question is. We're at a place, we're at an interesting juncture here as a club, okay? We have Ancelotti as our manager. We have a lot of really good young talent right now, okay? Um, and I get the vibe Ancelotti doesn't want to go out there and splurge and spend a bunch of money on huge stars, 
right? He wants to buy good players, they don't have to be huge stars, and he wants them to, to develop where we are, right? Um, so the question is, because uh, you brought up something interesting about Kenny as well. Kenny may not want to come back. You know what I mean? If he's looking at the fact that, hey, I, I can start every week in the Bundesliga, you know, he could. So if that's the case, would he not want to do that? to possibly come in and be a bench player at Everton. We have no idea, right? Um, I just wonder if just because we can get Sidibe for 13 million pounds, I want to know what the, other, what the other choices are and how much they cost. You know what I mean? If he's the best bet for money, I'm totally fine with bringing Sidibe in because we know what we have at that point, you know? But if it's a question of... A, something a, a little more unknown for 20 million, do we, but possibly a better player for 25 million, for 30, you know what I mean? Players are expensive now, good players, consistent players, uh, and if they're from another league, that could be a risk, and City Base had experience. I don't know the answers to any of these. I just feel like it's a lot of, uh, it's, it's, it's not the easiest question just to one off say yes or no, you know what I mean? You got to take his age into consideration as well. Uh, I he's believe 27. he's twenty-seven. Yeah, he's, yeah, he, he's not twenty-one, twenty-two. There's not a lot of time for him to develop and get better. I think if he comes here on a permanent, it's going to be his last big contract. And how many players of that age have we been burnt by over the past few years? They start well and then they just fall off a cliff, and then we're stuck with them. And because of their age, we can't get anyone to take them off our hands. It's very. Um... Feast or famine with those kind of players, you know. I mean, look at Idris Gay. He's yeah. he's not he was not super young when we brought him in. We got him a serious bargain, and uh, he ended up, you know, playing great for us and making us a lot of money. But then you got a player like yeah. like Sidibe, who he hasn't been playing every game, but he's been he's displayed a lot of flexibility as well because he's played some right wing as well, right? Yeah. So I think Ancelotti likes that too. Um, gosh, man. True. We had Stephen Pina back on loan that one year, and he was great for that six months. And he did well enough to convince everybody at the club to bring him back on a permanent. And then when he came back on a permanent, I mean, it wasn't all his fault, and, and I think he had injuries mount up. But in the end, it was it ended up being a poor piece of business, really, because other than that first six months we had him on loan, we didn't really get much out of him after, in, during his second spell. And... Uh, as I said earlier on, we've signed a lot of players who do well for a, a period and then their form just absolutely spirals and then we regret ever buying them in the first place. Yeah. Just like Schneiderlin, Sigurdsson, there's one or two others, Ashley Williams. Mm -hmm. So it's all, about, it's all yeah. about making sure you vet the players, their personalities, injury history, all that. And that's how you minimize your risk, right? And how they fit, how they fit with your manager, how they fit with the pieces around them. It's a fascinating question. So uh, where did you end up landing on this? By Sidibe comes in and anyone else? I would buy Sidibe, but it just goes back to what I said earlier on. As long as there are no silly demands right. at, at the table, then I'm all for bringing him in. If we agree the, the fee with Monaco, the 13 million, and then him and his agent decide to get cute in negotiations or they try and string us along because they've had other offers then I want the club to just walk away and say, no, you've been here a year. You know whether you want to, whether you believe in this project, whether you want to be here or don't. You either take what we offer you or we go somewhere else. So I'd have no problem with signing him. I'd have absolutely no problem with not signing him. But if I had to come down on one, I think he's probably worth it as a squad player. I'd, I'd bring him in as a squad player, but I wouldn't bring him in as an absolute guaranteed starter. And I wouldn't promise him to be a guaranteed starter. I'd make it clear to him that he is going to have to fight every single training session for that shit. Mm. Uh, since I since this segment requires me to be decisive, I will be. But um, I think you only buy Sidibe if he is the best, the best potential for what you want. So unless if you have what you feel like is a better bet at twenty five million, if you're Everton and you're in a little bit better position and you actually want to start competing on a higher level, you consider making that purchase. You know what I mean? 
I think, but if you're looking out there at the market and it's not feeling right and you can get, I mean, Sidibe is a bargain regardless. But you don't buy him because he's a bargain. You buy him because he's the player that you feel like you can afford and that will, that you, that will fill the hole that you need. You know what I mean? You're yeah, about to say something. Those, Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm thinking about it though, is he really a bargain? Because... He's got no sell-on value because of his age, just as we've just spoke about, haven't we? He's very affordable. Just because something's cheap and affordable doesn't mean it's necessarily a bargain. Because what if, is, as I said, his form curtails? And then That's a good question, we're just man. Stuck, yeah, then we're, we're stuck with more dead wood, aren't we? Hopefully not. That's a really but good I question, think, because it is around the same cost yeah. that we paid for Neos. That is this about the same amount that we paid for Omar Nias. Just saying, not to bring up that, but... <laughs> take, take, take his wages out of it. Take the wages to the side. Sandro Ramirez was a bargain on paper at four million, and we can't give the guy away. Well, see, that's, that's see that right there. But that was another problem, though. The reason he was such a bargain, we put him in enormous wages because we got him for, like, five million, right? Instead of, I mean, this is at least... in 13 in this market is not much. Okay, it's not much at all. It's it's like yesterday's seven million. You know what I mean? It's just totally different now. Um, so that that number's a bargain. But if he's on big wages because he's a bargain, that's that's the way. You're right. I think we would have had a lot more success getting rid of Sandro if he wasn't on this enormous contract. You know what I mean? Like I feel like that would have worked out yeah, better. True. Um, true. It's a great question, though. Um, I, I mean, I, I think for what he provides, he's someone who now has Premier League experience, he now has experience with our club, and he has experience with our manager and our players. That right there, add all of that together for $13 million, and we've been able to sample it. You know what I mean? We, we know what we have for the most part. I think it's a better bargain and less risk than any of the other players that we mentioned for like bargain prices. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think my only hesitation and everyone else's hesitation is maybe just his age. And, and that's a good. If that's was, a very valid one. And yeah, I agree. If, if he was twenty two, twenty three, yeah, I feel a lot better about 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 going for him and hoping that um, things work out. But even if we buy him and he turns out great, how long are we going to get? Mm -hmm. do, do you know what I mean? He's twenty seven. A fullback still the same players when they're thirty one, thirty two. Mm -hmm. Not not many of them, so maybe we'll get a couple of years. But it's clear to everybody that, or it should be clear that John Joe Kenny or someone who is of John Joe Kenny's age, who is not at the club yet, are the long term yeah. and right. right back. Exactly. And see, that's the thing. That's one of the reasons why, if Kenny was had the attitude for it, that would be my other selection. I would, if Sidibe ends up being the best fit for the money, I would say Sidibe and Kenny and then do that rotational thing and kind of see if Kenny's good enough to be... I mean, Kenny, at this point, he may be chiseled enough to and groomed enough to be able to to start, you know? And the, with, with Ancelotti, like, ro rotating, Kenny would play, like, every third game, right, if he's second string. But, again, I want to make sure I give that caveat. If there's a 23-year-old player that we feel like can provide a more consistent defensive and uh, in, in terms of is equally good going forward and just is, is, a, is an even better fit, I would rather make that call. But if that's not out there in the market? Yeah, even if he's not there yet, just as long as he's got a big, up, yeah. a big enough upswing. Yeah, see, as long as the see I have a there, tendency yeah. to kind of uh, understand like the fact that like I don't know everything about every club in Europe. So I just assume that there might be some really quality right backs out there that could fit us really well. I just don't, I, I, I don't have a list. You know what I mean? And so I always like to give that, 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 that caveat there. I like to say, say that. It's almost like a disclaimer. Like, I think Sidibe can fit and can do a job for us next season. I do agree with that. And I think we'll miss Coleman's leadership. I do you know, if he ends up writing off. Um, because he is good, one out of every, like, if you, as long as you don't play him every game, he's a good player. And that is the way Ancelotti works. So if we had to move forward with Sidibe and Coleman, I think we'd still be okay. 
Just saying. All right? I just don't know if OK is good enough. That's the question. All right? All right. I mean, let's be honest. There, there, we, have this, uh, we have this Latin motto that we're supposed to be living up to, and it's not uh, OK is good enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a thing. All right. That'd be an interesting little uh little uh, badge to have to put on the to put on someone's okay is totally fine. <laughs> you know, you got your team crest and it says okay is totally fine. I I I'd like to see that for some club that's just signing me to mediocre players repeatedly. Maybe an MLS club, maybe. I don't know. I don't want to say one specifically because then I'll potentially have fans jumping down my throat. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I guess we'll find out whether okay is, is good enough. Uh, and it could be okay turns out better than okay. So, to be fair, you never know. All right, so that is it for our right back going forward segment uh, with special emphasis on Sidibe. Uh, if you've been digging the videos, please subscribe to the Top Blues YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. If you want more Paul, who doesn't, eh? All right, check out check out the Toffee Blues website. He does uh, analysis on there, a lot of Everton analysis. It's all Everton analysis, what am I saying? Uh, so check it out there. Look at his Twitter. He'll tell you uh, when and where his stories will drop on there. And also just look at his Twitter because there's all kinds of pearls of footballing wisdom and worldly insight. Is that what I was supposed to say, Paul? Is that the way you wanted it worded? Yeah. That's very kind. Yeah. That's yeah, very yeah. kind, Jerry. That's, that's what I'm here for. I make everybody else look great. And then I just speak and make myself look very pedestrian. Hey. All right. So that's it, everyone. We are going to be back in, in just a moment. Talk, uh, talk about Arsenal match preview. Uh, yeah, that's happening soon. All right. Bye.